Good morning, folks. We've got major news stories to hit today. We hit several of our usual topics with brass knuckles on. But we also have some news on our star, and we're going to begin getting the non-story out of the way. NASA's Enlil Spiral nailed the timing, but the solar wind enhancement was even weaker than the weak impact expected. If not for high detailed telemetry, we'd never even know this one swept past Earth. So let's go to the last 24 hours on our star and watch two eruptive events as the southern coronal holes trudge along. The first eruptive moment came just left of center, just left of the central coronal hole. It was the release of a plasma filament which dispersed in the upper corona. And then, just in the last frames before this morning's show, a C-class solar flare erupted on the north. This one appears like a CME was possibly ejected, but coronagraphs and Enlil spirals won't be updated for a couple hours. Something to watch for today. First in the articles, there is still no Planet 9. This has been our position since they discovered all the dwarf planets out past Pluto, and with dozens to hundreds of them out there, you don't need Planet 9. And if you recall, we reported supporting evidence for that position in February of last year. Hey, cosmologists, do you feel it? That same lump in the back of your throat when such big-time studies wiped away enormous portions of the expected range for your previous dark matter candidate. You will find no axions as you found no wimps. Your concept of dark matter is a complete joke. And in that same vein, the classy version of my everlasting astrophysical battle put a great one out yesterday on water in the microwave background. If you don't know the problems with the CMB, they are utterly unbelievable. This one gets a boom shakalaka. Sven's mark is back, father of the cosmic ray cloud connection with the best yet correlation demonstration using four bush decreases right upon CME impact. It's one of the key space weather forcing parameters that still gets underplayed in climate models and storm forecasting. And speaking of that, looks like the hard X-ray crowd shouldn't have been so ignored in their pleas the last two decades. The ionospheric disturbance from solar flares rides the hard X-ray production, not the soft. And this is yet another way in which the sun sneakily touches the ceiling of the global electric circuit and then the entire atmosphere. Last couple here, folks. A confirmation of quiet since the NOAA event 6,000 years ago and leading up to the present geomagnetic excursion. The purpose of this one was to show that indeed, the South Atlantic anomaly is not a permanent feature, and Earth had a nice, calm field for thousands of years while our modern civilization grew up. In that same vein, now that we're back on the doorstep of disaster, they're coming up with epic ways to monitor the field loss in between the five-year official updates. When I've been telling you we can monitor space weather in between, I don't think I had any idea just how creative these scientists would get. Cut off rigidities to detail long-term changes in the magnetic field? No weight necessary. Observer in the author list. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.